So the wine of the week this week is our Estate Chardonnay. And we are going to open it, even decant it, and then taste it. And then I guess we're going to talk about it. Yes, yes. All right. This Chardonnay comes from our estate. It comes from three different uh, clones. Uh, when we first started, we had our consultants advise us as to what clones to use for Chardonnay here in Georgia. And they were 96 and 14. And then as we planted the next field three years later, Clone 4 was doing a great job for some of the vineyards around here. So we planted Clone 4. So when we came out with this Chardonnay, we decided to combine all three clones together to give it a much more complex fruit forward uh, flavor. And for me, this 2016 Estate Chardonnay is the best Chardonnay we've ever made. It's one of my favorite Chardonnays. I think it'll hold up to uh, anything that's out there in the wine world. So we have opened our 2016 Estate Chardonnay now. And what do you think about decanting white wines, Dad? Well, in my recollection of the history of wine, I never heard of anyone decanting white wines. But your mother and I have taken the point of taking some of our Chardonnays and not drinking all bottle in one day. And so the next day, we bring it back out and it has a chance to have 24 hours of breathing and opening up. And a lot of the Chardonnays taste better after they have a day of uh, opening up. So I don't know that I'm opposed to decanting white wines. We're gonna decant this wine. It's got a nice uh, deep golden color to it. And I, I know it wouldn't hurt to decant and perhaps it'll make it taste better. Now the next step is we're going to pour this wine and then I'm gonna take over the camera and uh, ask some interview questions uh, about how you guys are handling this, uh, what's it called, self-quarantine? Social distancing, that's what it's called. And then we're all gonna be drinking and then maybe the questions and the answers might get better. Mm. All right, so here we are, 2016 Estate Chardonnay. Fine. We have a nice Chardonnay here. Uh, I always like, I, I don't look at myself as having a great palate. I think I'm like the every man palate. I know what I like and don't like. I don't have a sophisticated palate, but it doesn't matter because most people don't have that. So when I taste a wine, I try to come out with maybe one distinct taste that I can get out of what I'm tasting. I know that's not very scientific. It's probably not the way to do it. Uh, this is a very smooth Chardonnay. I don't think it's overly complex. And the one flavor I get out of this is green apples. It's got a little bit of a green apple flavor to it for my palate, which is different than everybody else's palate. Um, to me, this is a very wonderful Chardonnay wine. Yes, well, the color of this wine, if you've noticed, is a little bit golden. <clears throat> That's reflecting its age, but the flavors have mellowed. It's not too oaky and not too citrusy. It's somewhere in between. It has a nice smoothness on the palate, has a nice finish. And I would say I agree with your green apple but I also taste some uh, honey uh, and just a bit of... Apricot. Apricot, that's right. So this one, to me, this wine was one of the best Chardonnays we had ever made because I remember 2016 was the greatest growing season we had ever had, right? We had been growing since 2007. And every year there was issues and we've had rain and we had a couple good years, eight, nine, those were good years. And then 16 was the best. It was a dry year. It was super dry, that's right. So the flavors that came out of our own fruit, we were always stunned because we always like to compare to Kistler, right? So some of the flavors that I'm getting on this, along with the apricot and that green apple, is a little bit on the finish. I get a little bit of like toasted marshmallow or a little bit of um, what's it called? Like caramelized? Caramelized maple. Yeah, caramelized maple. I, I get that a little bit on the finish, which is delicious. This was one of the first wines that we had that was not um, a big, huge butterball bomb. Butterball bomb? Is that that's, a, that's a word. Is that a word? Um, some of our wines in the past have been really oaky and really buttery because that's what you liked. And the winemakers continued to try and make it that way. And then this one was our first fresh, crisper wine that was not this huge buttered popcorn. And it was like a nice balance of acid 
and uh, oak, I think. I also make a comment that when I said that I don't really have a very good palate for tasting, Eric has an excellent palate, and he's one of the few people that I, I say that he's on the winemaking team because when we're making new wines and the winemaking people pull out the wines they're in the process of making, we always get Eric down there to taste the wine for a comment as to what is happening with it, how, what it's doing, what it should be doing, how it should be going. And he has an excellent, excellent input on how we make our wines. So what are some of the other wines that you and I have been drinking? Well, we have been having wine for lunch and wine for dinner. And <laughs> we have decided over the years when we go out to, uh, when we go to, France and we go to Italy and we go to Napa, which we've been to all of those places two or three times. Um, I end up buying two or three cases at every winery we go to. So now I go back and look at my library of wines over the years and I don't have enough time left in my life to drink all the wines. So I tell Jane, I said, let's make sure we drink the good wines. I've also lost track about some of the wines we have. I pulled out a wine the other day, a VHR wine, Vine Hill Ranch wine. And we sat down to have it for dinner, and I looked it up. It was a $900 bottle of wine that two people had given 100 points to. Ooh. Uh, so it's fun to drink the really good wines. And so we, we have some of our wines that we, you know, some of our favorites like Camus and some of our Quintessa are some of high-end wines. Cliff Lee's are high-end wines. Also, like last night, we drank a Viognier, which is not really on the market yet, is it? Is our Viognier? Our Viognier? Yeah, our Viognier. No, it's not on the market. Not on the market. I went way up high into the... I didn't go way up high. Uh, Tanner went way up high and pulled me a bottle of Viognier so I could try it out, and it was phenomenal. It was really Our good. Our winemaker says it's the best wine he's ever made. Really good. And that'll be coming out for the public here in the next four or five months. Yeah. So we have a lot of good wines in the uh, pipeline, and those are some of the ones that Jane and I drink. We drink some of the wines that are brand new. They're just coming out to sort of have a flavor for what the new ones are. Didn't we release that one for the Yona at Home already? Yes, and the Yona at Home, the Viognier, I hope people enjoyed that. It's really, really a special Viognier. Tristan's very proud of it. Uh, the first question we've been given is, how have you been handling social distancing, and what have you been doing? Well. That's fairly simple to do since the news has everything on your mind about the virus. It's very simple to think of looking at people staying six feet away. The easiest way is you're just not going out. You're just staying home. And luckily my wife doesn't have the virus so I don't have to be six feet from her. And we have a chance to stay together and be close and watch some movies and watch some TV. Um, so far it's been semi vacation time just to be able to do nothing. So Bob and I are very fortunate we, uh, we can go for walks outside on the farm. Uh, we uh, have been having fun watching old movies and catching up on cleaning out some closets, which was long overdue. Oh. And then once in a while, Eric comes up here and brings the girls and we have a little fun. So they've been in quarantine as well, so we're all safe. That makes it very nice. And we've been drinking a lot of wine. All right, we are still drinking the rest of this bottle of the 2016 Estate Chardonnay, so the answers might be getting better. What are your favorite wines produced at Yona so far? Well, I'll answer that. Every time we came up with uh, Genesis, which was our flagship red wine, that's always been one of my favorite wines. It's just a really, really well-balanced red wine that goes with steak. Um, we can compare that to $100 bottle of wines out of Napa and always do well with that. So that's always been one of my favorites. For the other reds, of course, Totem is our really first class $100 bottle of wine. There's nothing like Totem on the market. So we really like that wine for sure. Um, and then some of the other wines, our Petit Verdot is going to be a fantastic red wine for us. Our Chardonnays are going to be great. We're going to come out with five different Chardonnays over the next six months. And every one of those Chardonnays have been spectacular. Um, so those are some of the wines I like. All of our Chardonnays thus far have been excellent as far as I'm concerned. Our, we planted Clone 4 several years ago in addition to our Clone uh, 17 and 96 and being able to combine the various clones into one bottle so to speak has allowed us to really alter the landscape as far as flavors and flavor combinations so Tristan Van Hoff is doing a wonderful job with our, our 
Chardonnays, and I think I'd have to say those are my favorites. All right, so for this session, I think this will be our last rando question as we're coming to the end of this uh, 2016 Estate Yona Chardonnay. Uh, the next question is, what are your favorite wines outside of Yona Mountain Vineyard wines? Well, that's a great question. You know, when you're growing up and you don't have much money and you're young and you're at 20s and 30s, you, know, you buy the $12 bottles of wine, the $8 bottles of wine. So you don't really know what's out there in the higher end category. I can distinctly remember when I first had my first $80 bottle of wine and it changed my whole thinking about wine. So once you get to a certain category, there is a total difference on how wines taste. And so we've had a chance to be exposed to some very, very fine wines around the world. Uh, I've always liked the Camus wine, the uh, Special Select are fantastic. Uh, Hillside Select by Schaefer, Bill Schaefer's Hillside Select has always been a wonderful wine. Over the last five years, I've been collecting the 100 point wines by Robert Parker. And I have about 39 of those. And once a year we do a, a tasting where you can come and taste with us against the 100 point wines. And every time I've opened a 100 point wine, it just knocks your socks off. Um, now it should for $800 or $600 or the price of some of those wines, but they are totally in a different category. What, now that you've been quarantined, haven't you been sneaking some of those 100 point wines for lunch? Occasionally we drink some of the higher end wines. Our theory mm -hmm. is you drink the good stuff first before you die and someone else drinks it right. before so, you. Right, so maybe 39 is not an accurate number anymore. Maybe we're down to 36. Possibly, possibly. But okay. there are other good wines. You don't have to, hundred, have to have the 100 point wines, the 98 point wines, the 99 point wines. Still very good. Are right in that category. And it, it, and it truly is a, a mind blowing situation when you taste a really high end wine compared to just a wine. Many wines are average, some wines are good, some wines are very nice. When you get to the higher end wines, it's a different ball game. And my wife and I now, Jane and I have really enjoyed having the better wines. Other than Yona Mountain wines, uh, I really enjoy the Joseph Phelps Insignia, which is a Napa cab. It's a deep red rich cab. Full bodied, one of those knock your socks off kind of red wine cabs from Napa. Great with steak and asparagus. Uh, it just, uh, you don't need anything else for your meal than a glass of Phelps Insignia, a nice steak, and some asparagus. What about a white wine? What's your favorite white wine outside of Yona? Uh, Cliff Leedy makes a very nice Sauvignon Blanc, uh, as does Palmas. I'm enjoying some of the Palmas whites. Um, what's the Kistler. name? Uh, and Kistler. Kistler has been one of our favorites for years. 